So today what I want to take a look at is I want to see what running the Dolphin emulator is like on the B-Link SCR5 Max. This mini PC, of course, rocking a Ryzen 7 5800H with a stock TDP of 54 watts. So one of the highest TDP mini PCs you can get on the market, especially with what is one of the highest end implementations of the Vega iGPU before finally being replaced by RDNA 2. So we're essentially going to see what one of the best implementations of Vega does against Dolphin. Now we're only going to be doing GameCube games just because of the fact that I really hate having to deal with mapping the Wiimote onto an Xbox controller on Dolphin. So I just didn't really feel like doing that on this specific system. If you guys really want to see the Wii running on this system, let me know and I will go through that effort, but I really just did not feel like doing that right now. So we're just going to be taking a look at some of my favorite GameCube games. And of course, testing to see if we're able to run things at either native resolution or if we can actually push things to 1080p. And you're going to find that a surprising amount of games actually go all the way up to 1080p. So one thing that I found while testing out Dolphin running on the SCR5 Max is the fact that we're actually able to run a lot of these games at an upscaled resolution of 1080p. The performance in a lot of titles, as you can see here with The Simpsons Hit and Run, is pretty much perfect. And the upscaled resolution really goes a long way of making these older titles still look pretty great, especially when they're stylized like this game is. In general, it's overall a really impressive result, and I'm really happy to see that it performs this well on the system. As you can also see by our hardware utilizations, we're not exactly pushing the system very hard to do this. It makes sense. Dolphin is an emulator that at this point you can run on a phone. But still, being able to upscale certain titles is a welcome addition, and as you'll find throughout the rest of this video, it's not going to always be the case. That said, though, one that I was very happy to see respond very well to the upscaled resolution is Mario Kart Double Dash. Pretty much one of the only actual GameCube games that I regularly will come back and play. I'm not the biggest fan of emulation just because of the fact that I tend to find myself playing newer titles more than going back and playing older ones. But there's a lot of these older titles, specifically Mario Kart and Mario Party titles, that are still really great to play with friends. So being able to play this at a upscaled resolution is definitely a welcome addition. And it is funny to think that it is running at a higher resolution than the newest Mario Kart does on the Nintendo Switch when it's not docked. Of course, a franchise that I really absolutely loved when I was growing up was the Dragon Ball Z Budokai series, and especially when it got to the Tenkaishi series. But here you can see Budokai 2 running at 1080p, and we're getting some pretty fantastic levels of performance. The 1% lows started off a little rough just as things loaded it in, but pretty much quickly recovered. You might be noticing that all of these have been with OpenGL. I did try Vulkan, at least on Windows. It was giving me a lot of graphical issues, pretty much the vast majority of titles. So I just did not end up using it, but OpenGL was doing perfectly fine. So I didn't really find much of a reason for wanting to use Vulkan, but there were certain titles that I feel like if a Vulkan was properly implemented, we probably could have gotten better performance. But thankfully, the vast majority of titles that I tried do perform really well at either their native resolution or even upscaled up to 1080p. But of course, one of the franchises that did not respond very well to these upscaled resolutions was the Need for Speed series. As you can see here, Need for Speed Carbon was really struggling to try to get 1080p out of this. You can see the 1% lows and our frame times are not exactly looking great. And really, we can't keep a consistent 60 FPS. If we locked this to 30, more than likely would be able to get that pretty consistently. But in general, you are probably better off just playing with the native resolution. But another game that I was very happy to see perform extremely well on this system is Lego Star Wars 2, the original trilogy. One of my all-time favorite games an absolute classic that I pretty much played all the time on my DS. Being able to see the game at a much higher quality than any console that I played it on back in the day is also really nice to see. And thankfully at the full 1080p resolution, we are getting some fantastic levels of performance out of this thing. I had an absolute blast. 
really this was an absolute nostalgia trip and this is one of those games that i am always happy to go back and test a lot of these older lego games their gameplay really has held up more than a lot of older titles just because a lot of controller conventions for games still weren't exactly standardized in this time so you'll go back and play certain titles and they'll just feel absolutely awful to play even if the game themselves is still good it's the arcane controls that can be kind of a problem thankfully this is a franchise that has held up very very well on the complete opposite end of the performance spectrum and continuing with the star wars theme we do have star wars jedi knights 2 jedi outcast absolutely fantastic fps that i have played so much growing up on the pc and i only played a little bit on the console it was interesting to come over here and actually see how it performed on the gamecube but really one of the biggest disappointments of this is the fact that the controls do feel very very stiff not exactly great to play it definitely feels its age i have just never really been a fan of inverted aiming controls that is what we have going on here there might be a way to change that in the settings i'm not 100 sure but really the aiming experience just felt absolutely brutal and it didn't help that the game itself was really not able to keep up and keep in mind this is not being upscaled up to 1080p this is at the native resolution so really a very very heavy title to run i would recommend just playing the windows version of this game being able to turn on the dismemberment is pretty much already a good enough reason but really it's the abysmal one percent lows that should push you over the edge on just considering playing the windows version so obviously there are going to be titles that you're going to run into just running at even the native resolution, but the vast majority of titles that I tried and a lot of the really popular ones, you can see here Twilight Princess running at 1080p at a full, pretty much locked 30 FPS. The only times things will ever dip down is when you're transitioning from one scene to the other. So while in actual gameplay, things will be completely rock solid. And like I said, the vast majority of titles are going to run pretty much perfectly fine at 1080p, with only a few of them giving you issues. And most of those issues could be fixed by just running things at native resolution. Though, as you saw with Jedi Outcast, that's not exactly going to be a fix for all titles. Some of them are really just going to have issues. Thankfully, of course, being able to access Dolphin means that you do have access to mods for specific titles out there. So you can always look into performance improvements for any specific titles. As you can see here with Need for Speed Underground 2, the performance is not always going to be ideal for 1080p. So if you're looking for a system that will be able to do 1080p with all titles on the GameCube, this just is not it. You're going to have to go with something pretty noticeably more powerful than this. You can, of course, take a look at how the performance is in some of these titles with RDNA 2 when we take a look at Dolphin emulation on the 6600H. and We'll even compare it to how it performs in this specific chip so stay tuned for that i hope you found this video interesting if you did be sure to subscribe of course you could always become a channel member for as little as a dollar a month and that greatly helps the channel equipment to continue to grow i appreciate you watching i'll see you guys next time